What up guys? Jason here again. Public service announcement. <laughs> Got home early from work so I figured I'd do another little video just for some uh, general wheelchair maintenance for you guys out there. Uh, anyone who's curious about why your wheels will be wobbling on and off or sometimes not locking in, I will explain that for you right now. So basically, I will take the axle, as you can see there, there's the axle. I'll pull that out of the wheel. Don't mind if it's dirty covered in grease, whatever. Uh, grease, WD, as you can see behind me right there, ting ting. So basically this is what you call uh, a wheelchair axle, or axle pin, whatever. You've got a button here, click, 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 click. And if you can see, basically you can see here, you can see, you see that little groove there, that little notch? See how it's got some grooves cut out in it? Basically along there, along the top and bottom. You can sort of see that there. And see the buttons, those little ball bearings? Basically, when you when you push this in, if you look at the ball bearing, it will drop down and it will let the actual pin through. So basically, the way these work is, you've got a receiver, which is about, oh, yay long, about inch, inch and a half long sometimes, depending on the chair. Basically, what happens is, the axle goes through that receiver and actually locks in, and the way it locks in, is by using those ball bearings as you see there. That's the only way it locks in. And the way you can pull it in and out is obviously by releasing the button, holding the button in and basically sliding it out of the wheel, out of the receiver. But sometimes what happens is it won't actually go all the way in. And the reason that is basically, I haven't got a receiver here to show you, but basically what happens is, let's say for example, you know, my finger is basically a receiver. What happens is, if it's not wound in far enough, you won't get the ball bearings going past the receiver, so it'll lock in. What happens is it won't go all the way past it, and then it'll basically slip out. Sometimes, on the other hand, what happens is the axle will have too much play in it, which means it'll be wound too far in, basically. And that means you've got a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth motion. Now the way to fix that, I'll show you in a minute, is basically what you want to do is you've got a nut up here so there's the nut excuse the fucking grease on my hands fuck 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 sorry <laughs> I've got to get me fucks out my swear words out now because I can't swear at work so fuck thank fuck fuck cunt shit fuck motherfucking fuck fuck okay anyway so you've got a nut up here and as you can see below the nut you've basically got some threads you can't really see it there but yeah behind the nut you've got a whole bunch of threads there basically and as I said before, as you can see, this little flat section just here, down the bottom of the axle, basically that's ideal for basically getting your, what you want to do is you're going to get a spanner, you get an 11 mil, 11 mil locks into the bottom there, see? Locks in nice there. And then basically, so an 11 mil for the bottom, and a 19 mil, big motherfucker, well not that big, tiny, and that basically locks into the top like that, basically, like so. And what you want to do is, you basically want to wind it out. So basically you want to go anti-clockwise, so looking at, you want to go anti-clockwise to basically wind it out, so it will go in further and lock in. But when you wind it anti-clockwise too much, you have that too much play, okay? And then basically what you want to do is you want to wind it clockwise to wind the axle. If you wind it clockwise, the axle will wind out, causing it to grab more. That way you won't have play. And ideally what you want to do is you still want to have a tiny, tiny bit of little bit of play in it you know, maybe two mil, maybe? Like a tiny, tiny bit of play, like fuck it, like a bee's dick of play, all right? Now you still need a little bit of play, by the time you put your body weight in it, um, it won't basically pop off and you'd be fucking, you know, your ass will be on the fucking ground. So again, you wind it anti-clockwise to wind it into the wheel, so it will actually grab behind that receiver. And then you'll wind it the other way, clockwise, so we're going clockwise now, so you wind it clockwise for it to pull out, okay? So again, 11mm for the bottom, 
19 mil for the top. And this will be basically a little trial and error. Best thing to do is when you got your wheel, you know, you basically you just want to, I barely take these motherfuckers off by the way, this is my spare chair. You want to basically, you can't really see it, but basically you want to leave it in your hub, leave it in your hub when you're adjusting it. That way you don't have to worry about pulling the motherfucker in and out, in and out, in and out, and all that sort of bullshit. So you adjust it while it's still in the hub. Ideally, you have your wheelchair up on the bench. That way you can just fucking pop it in, pop it off. See how the play is, basically. I'm not going to put my fucking wheelchair up on the fucking bench because I can't be fucked. And my bench is covered in tools. But yeah, um, like, share, comment. If there's anything else you want to know about it, um, let me know. Peace.